for the past seven days, whiskey squeaked several times a day and night. Mr. Ho, a divorced senior citizen, said solemnly. Without his sought attention, like how preschoolers throw tantrums to get parental attention, but he drinks about 50% less water. His stools are normal, but they are small in size now. I took leave from my gardening job to bring my guinea pig to you for a checkup. I pray he's not in serious bad health, said Mr. Ho. Mr. Ho worked for a landscaping company as a gardener, trimming and caring for plants and flowers of big shopping malls. He was not your usual old man as he is fashionable. He wore a face mask to protect himself from inhaling fine dust and soil, as the COVID-19 virus was not present in 2016. A broad brim hat to shield his suntan face from the harsh sunlight. He was not the stereotypical frail and vulnerable elderly. Guinea pigs did not typically cry for attention many times a day. I palpated the 17-month-old male. Whiskey shivered and moved away when I palpated the back half of his abdomen. This was where his bladder was located. I x-rayed his abdomen. Whiskey was crying for help actually, I told Mr. Ho. The pain was intense and that was why he sought you out for help. What could cause poor Whiskey to cry out for help for the past 7 days? Keep watching this video to find out more. This is a Be Kind to Pets veterinary educational video sponsored by Topayo Vets and is set in Singapore. We will discuss the ways to prevent urinary stone formation in your guinea pig. In this part 1 video, we will use the case study of whiskey to illustrate the diagnosis and treatment. Singapore is a city with over 80% of the residents living in high-rise apartments. Guinea pigs are small and hence popular as pets. On 5th July 2016, Mr. Ho brought whiskey in for consultation. The guinea pig was watered for treatment. He was given an intravenous drip, oral antibiotics, and painkillers. He passed reddish-brown urine overnight. A urine analysis and an x-ray was done. We contacted the owner the next day. The urine analysis confirmed the presence of blood and bacteria. The x-ray showed a urinary stone floating inside his bladder. This stone had a diameter of 5 mm. The guinea pig had abdominal distension and pain upon palpation. The bladder stone was indeed the cause of pain, impacted cologne and blood in his urine. I was too busy at work. Mr. Ho shook his head. Hence I delayed the vet visit for 7 days. Can he be operated on to get the stone removed? Not now, I advised. Whiskey has urinary tract infection and weight loss. He has to regain his health before surgery is to be done. He is not fit for anesthesia, and he may die if it is operated on today. Mr. Ho brought whiskey home. He fed whiskey oral medication, critical care, and water for the next seven days. A review regarding surgical removal of the bladder stone was due on the eighth day. However, on 13 July, the eighth day, whiskey could not walk. He could not pee too. He had not been eating by himself for the past 8 days. Mr. Ho had to hand feed him. The guinea pig has lost more than 120 grams as a result. Whiskey had a rectal temperature of 40.9 degrees Celsius. This indicated a fever. Another x-ray was taken. It was revealed that a stone had lodged itself inside the urethra, completely obstructing the flow of urine, hence he could not pee. I palpated his bladder which was a hard golf ball in size. Whiskey would soon die of a ruptured bladder or a kidney failure due to the backflow obstruction of urine. An emergency surgery was needed, but the anesthetic risk was so much higher now. Most likely, Whiskey would die on the operating table. You have to make the decision. I informed Mr. Ho of the complications and the high probability of death on the operating table. He signed the anesthetic and surgery consent form. The cystotomy surgery was a success. I incised the bladder wall and extracted a small stone of 5mm in diameter that was lodged tightly inside the lumen of the urethra. Whiskey recovered fully from the anesthesia. However, he was in a poor health state due to the lack of nutrition intake for the past 8 days. His body was too worn out. The beloved guinea pig passed away on the following morning, on 14th of July. 
Mr. Ho was very sad. Whiskey was cremated, and his ashes were kept in an urn. I sent the urinary stone to the University of Minnesota College of Veterinary Medicine to be analyzed. It was a calcium carbonate stone. Stones are usually formed as a result of eating an imbalanced diet, high in calcium and protein. Drinking less water or withholding urine for long periods of time before peeing and obesity may all be contributing factors. The following are some advice to prevent urolithiasis. Firstly, do not feed pellets exclusively. A mixture of 20% pellets, 80% hay, and vitamin C supplements is ideal. Secondly, monitor and ensure that your guinea pig drinks more water. Thirdly, a bigger house ensures there is space for peeing. Withholding urine owing to insufficient pee space may lead to urinary stone formation or a recurrence of urolithiasis. In addition, early veterinary consultation is important. When a guinea pig cries for the first time, it is advised to not wait 7 days. Early detection of blood in the urine and bladder stone removal when the guinea pig is fit for surgery will reduce surgical and anesthesia risk. This concludes the part 1 video. More information and videos can be found on our blog. The part 2 video will discuss prevention methods in greater detail. For more inquiries, please call our clinic's number or visit our website at topiovets.com.